Okay, yes, next we have um, Michael Pisani and Albert Shaw of the University of California at San Diego, uh, who will be telling us about explainable machine learning for COVID-19 management. So I'll let you guys take it away. Thank you. Okay, so first I'd like to thank NSF, uh, particularly Information Intelligence Systems for uh, funding this. And this is a collaboration between myself, a computer scientist and Albert, a radiologist with a deep background in deep learning. And we're using machine learning methods, particularly deep learning to analyze CTs or X-rays to manage COVID-19. While a diagnosis is important, we're also concerned with understanding the severity of this disease uh, from the imaging. And finally, it's not sufficient just to say you have a 96% chance of having COVID, but, or even to highlight a portion of the lower lung but we aspire to label the images with things like there's ground glass in the lower left lung. We're evaluating a variety of existing approaches for both uh, classification and explanation and starting to develop new ones as well. The ultimate goal is for machine learning to acquire diagnostic signs that can be communicated to people, such as a clinician when they're doing diagnosis, or perhaps to teach peers or residents without even the aid of a computer marking up the uh, images. On the next slide, um, we show the uh, process of uh, deep learning. Uh, and essentially we have a database, an existing database of images as well as new images that unfortunately we've collected at UCSD over the past uh, few months of patients with COVID. And uh, the goal is to take images of normal patients, those with COVID-19, uh, those with other conditions, uh, and uh, come up with a learning method that uh, distinguishes them and also provides the explanation. We're quite fortunate in that we get to leverage a lot of existing infrastructure that was already in place of doing imaging, sending it to the cloud for analysis, and then sending it to the uh, clinic where the physician end user can observe it. All of this was in place already uh, by uh, Albert at UCSD Health. And we've just had to modify the uh, cloud diagnostic procedures with new data from COVID-19. And from here, I'll let uh, Albert take over and explain a little bit more about uh, how we're doing this. Thanks, Mike. Um, thank you again uh, for giving us the opportunity to present the, this work. It's, it's definitely very uh, technical in nature, but also very clinical and, and impactful immediately as we're already using it in our clinic. Um, uh, the primary concept is really to develop AI algorithms that allow us to uh, localize uh, pneumonia. Uh, this is work that we started even before the COVID-19 uh, pandemic began, uh, but has been um, uh, accelerated a lot because of the, the need um, one really key important aspect of COVID-19 is that not every patient develops pneumonia. Some, some patients do and some patients don't. Some become asymptomatic, of course, but those that do, the severity of uh, pneumonia on x-ray uh, or CT uh, provides us very good prognostic information and a lot of data is starting to come out uh, with that. We've taken a very different strategy towards this uh, UNET type uh, segmentation approach as opposed to a lot of uh, classification approaches that have been previously used, although um, both are feasible and, and you can generate these kinds of probability maps and, and whatnot, activation maps um, from classification approaches, which we'll be exploring as well. Um, the important aspect is uh, quantifying the severity of illness, um, I guess, uh, essentially gives us prognostic information uh, because ultimately we want to know which patients require hospitalization, which ones can stay at home, uh, which ones require mechanical ventilation, and which ones are likely to survive or not. Um, and some of our initial data here is showing us that those patients um, with high uh, uh, likelihood predicted by the, by the algorithm are also the ones that tend to um, not survive and um, are the ones that tend to require intubation. Um, so this will give us really good data for how to best manage these patients. So that's a really critical element of how, how this will all come into play in our clinic and hopefully many others through our collaborations. Um, our current results in COVID-19, this is one example of a patient um, with COVID-19 um, who presented to our clinic, our AI algorithm produced, our initial AI algorithm produced this result, very subtle, not, doesn't really 
highlight the areas of pneumonia that well, um, as it was trained on initially only public data before COVID-19. Um, and we came up with a strategy that uses uh, active learning, transfer learning to specifically identify good cases for us to train on um, applying transfer learning to that neural network um, using also concurrently performed CTs that were done um, to give us a better ground truth. Um, and that, that's given us a, a higher performance both on the internal and external data set and really highlights the pneumonia better. So our initial algorithms um, that were in place were replacing with these updated algorithms uh, thanks to the support of the um, NSF and this project. Um, and we've been deploying uh, this it's, uh, in, in our clinic and there's certainly um, articles online about it um, as well as a peer reviewed publication that we uh, brought out uh, at around the time that we were investigating this initially. Um, and our next steps are really to aggregate large data, set, data sets across multiple institutions, have multiple readers, annotate, mark up the areas of pneumonia to, to sort of solidify the ground truth a little bit, use the CT as well, and develop a comparable algorithm for CT um, in, in the process. Uh, and ultimately, we want this algorithm to be explainable is really critical. Uh, for us to be able to use it clinically is to, to um, be certain that um, we're relying on features that really matter, not, not sort of accessory features that um, the neural network sort of coincidentally saw associated with COVID, but actually things that are related to it. And then, um, and then assess its clinical utility, both in the detection of disease, distinguishing between other diseases that are quite similar, like pulmonary edema, uh, and then give us best management practices for these patients. So that's, that's kind of where we're going. Thank you.